while I was exploring the awards collections, I saw a cool image trail effect inside the hovers and cursor interactions category. I noticed similar effects on a few other godly featured websites as well. So I decided to create a tutorial to show you an easy way to build this interactive animation using simple JavaScript all in just about 5 minutes. Make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's jump into the coding part. We are keeping things simple. First, we'll create a div with a class name of items. This will act as our container where all the dynamically generated images will be appended. To ensure our page doesn't look empty, I'll also add an h1 element. We'll begin by stripping away all the margins and paddings and setting the box sizing to border box. I'll also make the body background orange. The h1 element will be centered both horizontally and vertically on the page. To achieve this, we position it absolutely and use the transform property to adjust its placement precisely. We'll also add some basic font styling to it. Let's talk about the items container. It will be fixed in position, covering the entire viewport with widths and heights of 100 viewport width and 100 viewport height respectively. I have set its Z index to 2 to ensure it remains above all the other page elements. For each individual item, we'll assign an absolute position allowing us to place them based on mouse movement dynamically. Each item will have a defined width and height. Inside these items, images will fill their containers completely. Thanks to the object fit property set to cover, ensuring they maintain their aspect ratios no matter the size. With our CSS in place, we have laid the groundwork for our interactive elements. Next, we'll harness the power of JavaScript to bring our image trail to life. We'll listen for the DOM content loaded event to ensure our script runs only after the entire HTML document has been fully loaded. Inside this event, we start by selecting the items container where our images will appear. We initialize a few variables. Image index starts at 1, which helps us cycle through our image files. Animation timeout will manage timing for animations. Currently playing is a flag to ensure that animations do not overlap. Now let's focus on the add new item function. This function is responsible for creating new items or image containers every time it's invoked. It positions these items based on the X and Y coordinates from mouse movements adjusted so the mouse appears centered over the image. The image themselves are dynamically sourced from a set sequence cycling back to the start after reaching the 15th image. After adding an image to our page, we call manage item limit. This function ensures that our page doesn't get overwhelmed by too many images. It does this by keeping the count of the images to a maximum of 20. If there are more, it removes the oldest ones. Next up is the start animation function. This function uses gsap to animate our images. If no images are present or an animation is already playing, the function exits early. Otherwise, it animates all images by moving them downwards while scaling them down and fading them out, creating a smooth disappearing effect. Each image starts its animation slightly after the previous one, thanks to the stagger property. This animation ends by removing the animated images from the DOM to free up resources and resets the currently playing flag.
Finally, we attach a mouse move event listener to the container. Whenever the mouse moves within the container, it prevents the previous animation timeout from firing too soon with clear timeout. Adds a new item at the mouse position and sets a timeout that triggers our animation after a brief pause. This setup ensures our page remains interactive and dynamic, creating a delightful visual effect as the user moves their mouse around. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.